a delegato, Minoshi Bubu, Minoshi Dominati, Alabama Catania Codada, Ayinana, Pre Incami President, John Dramani Mahama. Akwa Choboy Choboy Alasu, Opa Monia, Le Togo, Togo Tono Trifli, Inada Ecodape. Oprona Janda Mario non a fuma, lo so già non a fuma. Nana do adaka boqua, Oprona be chuena mega. Chuena mega, Tanuka gami le tetif me. Chuena mega. La camia way. La camia way. La camia way. Macania mega. John Achitrenu. Brasicole. Bra Hajiji. Bra Tijo. Nyakwa do Jana Miafo. Nyak performer president. The incoming president. John Dramani Mahama. Ashik Panadi, Ashik Panadi, John Dramani Mahama, incoming president, Adidim, Bayapongna Duko, Amashama Nap for Shikpane, Nadakone, Bawazu Jirula, Akota Dablibo, and this is a Jiru Katula for Zagomatonai, Apa, John Dramani Mahama, incoming president. Forward and to seek your future development, our goal from victory unto victory, the end this shall be in a sail. The world cry to Ghana, our strength in unity. From victory on to victory, the end is Charlie. It is a full democratic Ghana. Our strength in unity. Thank you, thank you. The only political party with an anthem in Ghana. Aren't you proud to be NDC? Medokoku Midoto, Midoto. Akweka Kakaka. Maonai Ramikata. Honorable Chairman. Honorable Member of Parliament. James Kluche Abeji. Constituency Executives. Regional Chairman, Regional Executives. All branch executives from K2 North constituency, I bring you greetings and thank you for coming out in your numbers to welcome me. I'm not going to talk for long, but I just want to say that I'm here for one simple reason. And the first is to thank you for what you did for me in 2019. In 2019, when we held the primaries, you gave me 98%. And that helped me to win that primary by 95.3%. I know that, and Honorable Aveji and Chairman have assured me that this time, we're going to make what? 100%. And I know that if we make 100% in K2 North, overall, the whole country, we will make 99%. So I came to thank you for the 98% and to urge you to vote for me. Somebody, when I was coming, he said, oh, but President Mama, everybody knows you. All the delegates know you. So you don't need to 
spend effort going round. You can go to the regional capital and call them to come and come and meet you. And I said, no. The delegates deserve respect. And I should go to them. They shouldn't come to me. So I decided that I'll come region by region, constituency by constituency, and meet you directly and reintroduce myself that I'm John Dramani Mahama and I've come to ask for your vote on May 13th in the presidential primary of the NDC. And that, that is going to be the first step that will lead us to victory in order that we can rescue our dear country from the clutches of this super incompetent, clueless government. In 2016, you were all despondent because after all that we had done, we found it cruel justice that we lost the election. Because under my administration, four years, the debt that we borrowed in my time was 54 billion cities. And yet, we built airports in Ho, in Accra, Kotoka, in Wa, and other places. We built a new Tamahabo. We built roads. We extended water. We built community day secondary schools. We built hospitals. And I remember the whole airport. They said it's a white elephant. What does who deserve an airport for? Today, they are going to celebrate Independence Day in Ho. They are preparing the airports because the, their planes can now land in Ho. They don't have to drive all the way for Accra. Uh, yeah. And so, after all that, we lost. But God knows best. And when we lost, I handed over, I congratulated them, and I said, posterity will be the judge. Today, posterity is vindicating you. Because today, now you can be proud as a member of the NDC that your government handled this country far, far better than this bunch. Let me not use any word on them. <laughs> but look at where we are today. Today, Ghana is broke. A gamelio. They've eaten all the money, chopped all the money. We are broke, we are bankrupt. For those of you who understand, bankrupt. When they say a nation is bankrupt, or a person is bankrupt, it means he has defaulted on paying his debt. We've told the whole world, and all the people that we owe, that we can't pay. And this includes our own citizens. Our own citizens who use their life savings to buy government bonds, including pensioners. The little money they were giving when they finished working after 50 years of work, they used it to buy government bonds. And your MP has been our ranking member on finance, now he's a uh, uh, public accounts committee. And he will explain to you that a government bond anywhere in the world is the safest investment anybody can make. Because countries don't go broke. This is the first time in the history of West Africa that any country has gone broke and said it can't pay its debts. Of all the countries we have in West Africa, we are the first to be bankrupt. And it's surprising that they don't keep quiet and listen. They keep talking and say, no, it's COVID-19 that caused it. COVID-19, it came to only Ghana. It didn't go to Cote d'Ivoire. It didn't go to Togo. And yet, why are we the ones who are bankrupt? They say, no, no, it's the Russia-Ukraine war. Alakpa. Alakpa to. Long before Russia-Ukraine COVID, this economy was already going to crash. 
And as Honorable Kluche Aveji, they warned them from 2018. Every year, the, press, the uh, finance minister was going and borrowing $3 billion every year. And any time they brought the budget, James Kluche Aveji and his colleagues in parliament to say, the rate at which you are borrowing, you are going to crash this economy. And they say, oh, just shut up. Today, look at it. And like Honorable said, what we need now is experience. We need to hit the ground running. Ghana is at a critical stage. We need NDC to come back and rescue Ghana. And to be able to do this, we need experience to do it. We don't need somebody who will win the election and they will now go and show the person, this is your office in Flagstaff House. I know the president's office in Flagstaff House. Because I worked there before, from Independence Square, I'll drive straight to my office and start working. We need exper experience, not experiment. Experience, not experiment. We don't want Midumpo. Never, never again do we want Togbi Midongpo. And so, Ghanaians are looking up to us. And elections are won or lost at the polling station. And who are the polling station? Our branch executives. So it means that I am not going to win as the election. If you make me the flag bearer, I will be there, I will campaign, I will move around the country, I will come to all your constituencies, your branches. But on the D-Day, I can't be in 40,000 polling stations. Who are going to be in the 40,000 polling stations? It's you, the branch executives. And that's why I say you can win as the election. Because if you are vigilant at your polling station, there is no way, I have no doubt in my mind, that NDC would win the 2024 election and come to power in 2025 January. And our opponents are very slippery. If you don't watch them, they will dribble you just now. And so we need 100% vigilance at the polling stations. And so because you are going to win as the election, the resources and the logistics for the campaign must come to the branches. And I was just saying that one of the complaints I got in one constituency was that one of the executive members who the t-shirts were sent to, he had a t-shirt, his wife had a t-shirt, his in-law had it. So give it to the supporters, give it to the branch executives, let them wear it, let them campaign and win us the election. And so we're going to mobilize the logistics. We're going to get the t-shirts, the posters, the calendars, the, the, all the paraphernalia, the bicycles, the motorcycles. And when we get all those things, send the t-shirts to the branches. Send the posters to the branches. Send the bicycles to the branches. Send the motorcycles to the branches. And let them use it to campaign for us to be successful. And I can assure you, when NDC wins the elections, Ghanaians will be in no doubt that the NDC is better at governing this country than any other political party in the history of Ghana. And so it calls for all of us to work hard. And one of the points I want to make is about polling agents. Our basis for selecting polling agents should not be who came to the party first. It should be who can do the job for us. 
Today, the election is not the kind of election it used to be in the past. Today, you need somebody who's educated to sit at the polling station. Somebody who can work arithmetic. If you can't work arithmetic, you are no use to us in the polling station. Because you should be able to look at the figures and make sure that the figures are exactly what was counted in the ballot box. You should be able to compare the number on the biometric machine and make sure that that number is the same as the number of ballot papers in the ballot box. And so, if you're a chairman and you can't work arithmetic, or an executive and you can't qualify to be a polling agent, you have children who are in university, you have children who are in training college, bring them, let us train them, and on that day, let them go and sit there for us, and do the job for us, so that we can win the election. But I'm confident, and the people of Ghana are waiting for us. Everywhere I go, they tell me, we are going to vote massively for you, but please protect our votes. Please protect our votes. Ghanaians are waiting for the NDC to come back to power. And we dare not fail them. We dare not fail them. We will never be forgiven if we fail Ghanaians. And so, Avedi and Co. are fighting in Parliament against a constitutional instrument that says that if you don't have Ghana card, you can't uh, register. And you just can't understand the sense with which the EC are pushing this stubbornly. The point is, we are not against Ghana card. I myself have a Ghana card. And I came on TV and I encouraged all Ghanaians, including NDC members, to go for their Ghana cards. But the point is, NISA says they have no money. They have the cards in a the warehouse, they can't pay and take. And even if they pay and take, they cannot go around and give everybody a card. You have to travel to the district capital to go and get a card. And I said, these are people who don't even understand the geography of Ghana. If you go to my constituency, Bole Bamboy, the farthest branch is 82 miles from the district capital. How much will it cost somebody to take a car, go to the district capital, do a Ghana card, and travel back? And the most frustrating thing is, sometimes you go, they capture your biometrics, then they say, oh, they can't bring the card. So go back home, 82 miles, and come back after two weeks, 82 miles, to come and collect the card. It doesn't make any sense. Until a time when the majority of our people of voting age have Ghana cards, we must have another system that allows them to prove they are Ghanaians. If my child does not have a Ghana card, I have a Ghana card, my wife has a Ghana card, the child is our child, we cannot go and guarantee for our child that our child is a Ghanaian. Then what kind of people are you? Even the Ghana card itself, they allow guarantors. If you don't have a passport and a birth certificate, two people can guarantee for you who have Ghana card that you are a Ghanaian. So if Ghana card is using a guarantor system, how come voters register can't use a guarantor system? And yet they know what they want to do. And that is why they are insisting only Ghana card. Because then they can disenfranchise a lot of our people. They can do what they call voter suppression. Because what they do is, for where they have strongholds, they will make sure that more people have the Ghana card. And where they don't have strongholds, they will frustrate you and make sure you don't have card. We go to the district offices, they will tell you here in Volta region. Every day after giving 15 people, they say, oh, the system is down. Every day the system is down in Volta region. That is what we call voter suppression. And I hope they don't play the trick they played the last time. Western Togoland. When it was getting to registration and elections, Western Togoland, people appeared and they did the Western Togoland, which caused confusion. As soon as we voted and finished, Western Togoland vanished. 
I haven't even heard one whisper of Western Togoland. You wait and see. Soon they'll come, come and pour sand on some road, shoot some guns somewhere. Ah, the Western Togolanders have come again. Alakpa. <laughs> Is they themselves who are the Western Togoland? Finally, your MP has served his party and his nation well. You should all be proud of James Kruche Aveji. The whole Ghana knows him because he served as a ranking member for finance. And I remember that when I came into office as president, I invited him and whispered to him that I want you to come and serve in the executive as a minister. And he says, Mr. President, I'm doing a very good job for you in Parliament as a ranking member on finance. And so I'll prefer to just continue doing that work for you. And in the period that I was president, oh no, Tom chairman, he was a chairman of the finance committee. For the period that I was president, the bulk of the projects that we did, the bills for the loan facilities and all that to build all the things that we built went through his hands as chairman of the finance committee. And also as chairman of our public accounts committee. He's done a yeoman's job. But it is wise people who know when the time is to say thank you and give up. He has thought about it and he says, I've done a lot for my constituency K2 North. I've done a lot for my party in parliament and I think it's time to hand over to the next generation. I want to thank him for all the work he has done for us and to say that you must be proud of him that he's been your MP all these years. But now the time has come to elect somebody to take his place. And I am told, as he said, that there are 10 footballers. One more would have made a football team, but he has volunteered to be the goalkeeper. So let the 10 go and play, and let's see who can score on the other side. 10 brilliant people. All of them worthy to be parliament, to be in parliament. And I say that, but for the constitution, if the constitution had said we can have 10 MPs for one constituency, we would have sent all of them to parliament. But unfortunately, it says one. Every constituency can have only one member of parliament. So it means that out of the 10, we have to choose one. It's not an easy choice. But what I want to remind you is that they are all our children. They are all NDC. The real enemy is our opponents, MPP, not ourselves. And so all these 10 are our children. It's like chieftaincy. When there's chieftaincy vacant in a family, all of us go and contest. But when we have chosen one from our family, we all rally around that person so that he can be a successful chief. So let us do the same thing. Clean, decent campaign. No insults. Because after the primaries, we need to bring everybody together in order to go against our opponents to win at the victory. So let's have a clean campaign. No insults. All of them are our children. The power belongs to you to make the decision. Nobody can make that decision for you. I can't make that decision for you. You would make the decision yourselves. And so look at those 10 people carefully. Look at their character. Look at their track record. Look at what they've done in the past. And based on that, think through it carefully and reflect and take a decision. 
on who you think will be a worthy candidate to replace James Aveji. That person must be strong to be able to mobilize all the people of Georgia, including all the young people, to mobilize them in order that we retain the seat. God forbid that Atiglingi should take it to north from us. It will never happen. It will never happen. But any time the elections, if you notice, they target K2 North. But the point is, those people who have tried to take K2 North, God has exposed them. You've been in power for eight years. After struggling for the K2 North seat, in eight years, what difference have you made in K2 North? Nothing. The value has reduced to zero. <laughs> and so the decision lies with you. And so let's have a clean campaign. And May 13th, we will choose our flag bearer for the elections and also our parliamentary candidate. And when we've done that, let's all rally behind our candidates in order that they can achieve victory for us. Mariana Mikata. Akpenami.